too. All right, world. Welcome back to Wondercast. We have recorded several episodes over the last few weeks, but uh, they aren't going to be able to make the light of day because, unfortunately, there was some audio issues that we didn't notice until like we went to edit them to post them within like a few days later. So, all of our hard work, all of uh, our memes, all of my ranting about Dell, literally every episode where I ranted about Dell, not included. <laughs> Yep. Ah, it's probably for the best. It got yeah, heated. Yeah, it could. It, it could, got heated. <laughs> it could have totally been uh, one of those moments where it should have been like, well, we talked about Dale. They might come for us. But since this audio didn't record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, anyway, if you're listening to this episode, thank you so much. As always, I'm your host, Riker Taylor. I'm joined in studio with producer Alex. And today we have a special guest, not from outside the organization, but from inside the organization. We have... Inside the organization, you say? (laughs) What? What are these conspiracies? (laughs) We can't even get to the intro. We're not ever going to intro her this whole episode. I've gone three weeks without hitting a meme button. I'm allegedly on the team. (laughs) You're allegedly on the You're allegedly on this podcast. But it's Michelle Morris our marketing associate here at Wonder Tree. So she's newer to the team. You're what, like uh, two months in, getting close to two months in. So mm-hmm. you're still here. So must be enjoying it, right? Yep, so far, so good. <laughs> yes, good, good. Yeah, uh, well, we've had a lot of fun with having you around. And uh, obviously you've brought a lot of marketing knowledge. Alex, we need the knowledge meme. We have such a large <laughs> library, and you're still asking for more. I know. I, it's kidding. because it's the the memes that I need to like back me up. Just aren't they, they're they're getting there. We had the X Files one now, and that was like much needed. Yes, that's the one. That's right. Anyway, um, she's brought her marketing knowledge to the team, and just a lot of it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're changing some things up on social media. Already have, and will continue to be doing so. So that's exciting, but. Uh, The premise of some of the episodes that we've been recording over the last little bit has been about marketing and marketing channels and various things like that. And like I said, those are lost, never to be listened to, even by us, (laughs) because the original file didn't have the audio. But um, anyway, so I was like, you know what? Forget about it. The other two were, were honestly just long rants about Dell and their just lack of customer service. So instead, I figured we'd, you know, change it up a little bit, continue with the marketing and branding discussion. Uh, we're going to have to remember a little bit of what we talked about in the previous episodes because there was a few things we talked about that I was like, man, those are nuggets of gold. And then now they're lost forever. So we're going to have to dig deep in the recesses of our mind, Alex, and, and figure that out. But also want to talk with Michelle about some marketing stuff uh, as well. And she had no idea she was going to be on this podcast like 30 minutes ago. I was just like, Hey, we're recording. You're joining us. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I can, can confirm. So before we go too deep, Michelle, I'm going to let you tell us a little bit about yourself so the listeners can get familiar. All right. Well, um, I just graduated college recently and pretty much the Saturday I graduated college, I started working at Wonder Tree the Monday right after. Yeah. So that was a whirlwind. It was super fun. And honestly, I'm glad I didn't have a break in between because um, I just like to go, go, go and just keep doing like anything that makes me busy. Um, so that's pretty much how it started. And then since then, I've been doing marketing for about three years now. Um, most of it social media or event planning and building relationships um, with like the audience that I'm working with. Mm-hmm. So Um, I did a lot more of hands-on, I guess, in-person people in marketing, which you talked about a few times with marketing as a people business sort of thing. So Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of things that you talk about on that, like I can align with. So Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely interested in keep like expanding my knowledge with marketing and um, honestly just utilizing what we do know and like what we're learning and evolving with every day to actually use in um, what we're doing with our clients. So for sure. Um, yeah, very excited to be here with Wonder Tree. I love that we're getting new clients and we're learning more every time we step into the office here. So yeah, like one is learning how to make sure the audio gets salvaged from the episodes that we're recording. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of yeah. garbage. It hurts. It I don't really know who does. to blame for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at someone. I don't know who it is, but I'm mad at someone. Now, 
Uh, it's just technology par for the course. Am I right? Um, yeah, well, it's funny you mentioned the people business because that's one of the episodes that's lost in space mm-hmm. and time now. So we can talk about that a little bit, uh, but we're going to talk about it through the lens of me not ranting about Dell the whole time. Uh, but we are going to talk about customer service and how that is a marketing channel. Um, and it, as Michelle alluded to, uh, the people business. I mean, every business is in the people business, honestly. At the end of the day, if you boil it down to the most basic thing that businesses serve and act upon, it's people, right? Doesn't matter the service or the product. And what do you need to do with those people? You need to take care of them. That's customer service, customer success, whatever you want to call it. That is a marketing channel. Too many businesses, I feel like, don't understand that their customer service team is honestly probably a bigger marketing team than their marketing team can be at times, especially. Um, And whether you have a good customer experience or a bad one, you're marketing your business in a poor or great way, just depending. So that's kind of going to be a little bit of what we talk about a little bit. Um, And I want to kick this question over. We'll we'll start with Michelle, then we'll go to Alex. But I want to ask you guys, just top of mind, rapid fire question. If you could name one business that you've dealt with throughout, like the one that you deal with often that has great customer service, tell me who it is, why you think their customer service is great. All right. So um, I actually was thinking about this company before you even asked that question. Um, I toured Southwest Airlines a few years ago for their public relations team and just kind of looking into what that looks like behind the scenes Mm -hmm. because their branding is top-notch phenomenal. They have the whole fly Southwest where a family type deal going on Mm -hmm. and they kill it in that sense. Mm -hmm. And um, they actually have a marketing team just for client relations. And anytime there's a tweet sent out, they have a marketing goal. And this is honestly probably changing like even now since it's been a few years to within 30 seconds having a response to a tweet online if you're using their hashtag. So that is pretty incredible. Exactly. (laughs) And I wish like I could just show you what their room looks like, but they have a huge room of just nothing but screens. Everything is um, pretty much monitored. Anyone live tweeting about Southwest, um, putting Google reviews, anything it's happening simultaneously on the screen and they're answering it right then and there. Like it's instantaneous with their entire team. So I would definitely say that is a huge, everyone should strive to that sense of we're responding immediately, whether that's a positive thing online or negative either way like people need those responses and so i think southwest airlines does a great job at that nice and that suggestion has now just led to a new thing we're doing up here at wonder tree we're going to beat southwest and respond in 29 seconds all right if you tweet at us we'll get back to you within 29 seconds guaranteed michelle's going to do it right i'll work on it yeah even at three, <laughs> three in the morning if you tweet us you can expect some witty reply alex who is it for you I have two lead-ins for them. Okay, you were coming in hot and starting. I, I saw I, you unmute the mic. And you're yeah, ready have, for this, I'm, man. I am ready for this. Yeah. Uh, my first response is sudden link. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, that's not my. That's not my number one. Uh, let me get back to that. My first. My second thing is <laughs> Michelle said that there was a room full of screens at Southwest. Are you sure you're not talking about Mission Control? <laughs> Oh, no. You might have to unpack that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> okay. sorry. That was another bad joke. Oh, just... <laughs> okay. All right. Um, no, I, I, do have, I do have actually a good one. Um, I've actually had pretty good luck with Apple, uh, all okay. things considered. Um, I've had some issues with my phone and things like that, and I've had issues with my, uh, my computer before, uh, my personal computer. Mm-hmm. And I feel like every time I get a... Uh, get on the phone with them. They're always super friendly, super nice, and they usually help me out. Uh, With the phone thing, I've had a little less luck, but I know they've still been trying aside from one person. Mm -hmm. So I will give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, Batting 99,999 is still pretty close to 100%. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we've switched them up here at the office, and it's been incredible, right? It's been flawless, honestly. Oh, God. Find the one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we get all the luck we can. Yes. Don't, you can't say that and jinx us, man. You can't say that and jinx us. This is the entire reason yeah. we got this one because of Apple. Yes. Yes. Awesome. That's yeah, the Southwest joke he made, it was obviously airlines, mission control, all the screens. Oh, that did happen, right? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That was recent. <laughs> Sorry. No, when you said mission control, I'm like, what's that mean? But no, no, no. Okay, that's whenever all their screens went blank and people thought that it was hijacked, right? Uh, Michelle. <laughs> that's the people who control the airlines. 
That's mission control. Mission like air traffic controllers. Oh no, it's definitely not them. It's definitely it is. No, a no, that was the joke. That though. was the joke. This is why. This is why I told you not to put me on the show. I knew it. I yes, knew it. dude. I knew Alex this is happened. Made, the you know, it's 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 oh okay. God, it's, it's, it's Michelle. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I promise. Because Riker's done the same thing oh, with yeah. Blake Buchanan. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that last podcast we had with Blake, where he, he's, he's Riker asks, "Is there like a secret flavor?" Very jokingly, Blake goes, "Yeah, it's gonna be he." And he did jazz hands and everything, mayonnaise. <laughs> and Riker goes, "Really?" <laughs> His eyes were as big. And Blake goes, "No, absolutely not. No, it's not <laughs> a mayonnaise it's flavored a snow See, cone." If you would have asked me the question, I would have just smiled and like nodded. It would have been just fine. But you had to ask me. I'm sorry. Question. I'm sorry. I didn't mean you to bust your chops me. right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> One episode in, and we've Failed busted my her first chops. Quiz. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's right. great. That's right. amazing. I I love how I was like trying to break it down for her, and she was like, "I still don't get it." Alex, like, the whole time was just over there, just like his eyes are getting bigger. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> So for those of you at home, airlines have screens to be able to watch the planes that are up in the sky. But apparently Southwest also has screens to watch Twitter. So Mm -hmm. there's that. That's impressive. That's the takeaway. So joking aside, that's pretty pretty cool for sure. I'll try to find it. I bet you they have it somewhere on their social media. Okay. Mission yeah. control or or like the actual picture? <laughs> Mission control. It's, Yikes. it's their PR room. I swear they have a PR room. I promise you. Now I feel like I have to defend myself <laughs> and pull this picture up. Michelle was like, "That's Twitter. Sorry, no, Michelle. no, that's uh, that's somebody landing in New York." <laughs> that's fair. Yikes! Uh, watch, watch Southwest though. Low key, direct their traffic through tweets. It's just like private tweets. It's like so and so is landing here, so and so is landing there. It's just all Twitter. Or it could totally be that they're doing both as we speak. They mm-hmm. just have it, you know, their air traffic control people are actually just social media experts too. Yeah. Marketing marketing time. so good it can land a plane. Mm-hmm. God. Yep. Wow. Wow. Okay. So Ah, uh, we need to get back to the topic at hand, which is the people <laughs> business. Hey, this is fun now. I, I I enjoy this. This is a lot more cheery <laughs> than the episodes that will never see the light of day. Those were kind of, those were definitely rage. off. Yeah, rage, rage and just off pace podcast. for me, honestly. It was very out of character. Alex was like looking the whole time like, I'm scared of this guy right now. Oh, man. Um, anyway, but the, this comes down to the people business, right? So circling back around. Uh, Apple has some great customer service nine times out of 10. They have a great product. Uh, you know, Southwest, I only fly Southwest pretty much. I mean, if I had to fly American or had to fly United, I would, but I will go out of my way to fly Southwest. Even if that means I have to land at some obscure airport or take an extra trip or something. Cause I just like Southwest that much better for me. My brand is, I mean, I'm surprised Michelle. I'm honestly surprised you didn't pick them, but Chick-fil-A. Oh, I'm so hurt. I can't believe this. Yes. Yes. This Chick- opportunity. I should have yes. missed them too. That's a, that's <laughs> yes. A both of y'all should have been Chick-fil-A, my guys. I let them down. I let yes. them down today. Yes, you did. Come on, Michelle. It's your pleasure, don't you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but Chick-fil-A is definitely one of mine when it comes to customer success. I think they set the tone for the entire fast food industry. It's no mistake or no coincidence, rather. I mean, it's not a mistake. It's no coincidence that the Whataburger right next to the Chick-fil-A over in Lubbock off of 82nd Milwaukee, they've got the Whataburger has somebody out there with an iPad now in their drive through just like the Chick-fil-A does. No other Whataburger in town that's not next to a Chick-fil-A has that drive through experience. It's just that one. So you know they're like sitting over there like, like mm-hmm. looking at the lines of rows of cars in the Chick-fil-A one, like, what are they doing? And then they're just totally ripping that off. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, also, the person working the Whataburger drive through Button down shirt, slacks, the whole nine looking just like, like, so like literally everyone wants to be Chick-fil-A that's in that industry. I, I mean, it just, it's just what it is. And why? One, because they make the Lord's chicken, but two, because they have great customer service and they just make you feel good. They rarely miss. I mean, if I order three sauces, there's usually three sauces in that bag. You know, like there's, I'm never opening that up. If I go to Raising Cane's, and I order an extra cane sauce, I sometimes question, I, I question every time actually for good reason because sometimes that can, extra cane sauce doesn't make its way in there. Mm-hmm. And I used to be a, a hardcore caniac as they call them. And now- <laughs> sauce is expensive nowadays, don't you know? Yeah, and just for them to not even put it in there. 
So yeah, that's why I go to Chick-fil-A. Honestly, I go to Chick-fil-A now over Raising Cane's because I'm just like, no, they're going to get my order right. The app is easy to use. Everything is just a flawless experience. I don't have to go out of my way too much. There's a Chick-fil-A in like every corner in this town. Yeah. So that that's mine for sure. And if you're listening to this, um, you know, think, think to yourself, where's a place that you've been to recently that just had customer service that stood out to you? Where A, where was that place? And B, what stood out to you and why? And then C, how often do you go there? And most likely, unless it was like your first time ever going to that place, you've probably gone to that place a lot uh, in your life because you enjoy it. It has good customer uh, experience, good customer service. Um, And as that ties back to marketing and branding and sales, uh, there's no easier way to grow your business than to maintain your current customers and upsell them and, you know, continue to bring value to them in the long term. Um, it's, you know, way hard. It, they say it's way harder to bring on a new customer than it is to keep an existing one. And it's so true. Like you really have to go out of your way to lose a customer. And a lot of businesses be out here going out of their way to lose customers. So, uh, I've done a lot of talking on this topic. Uh, either one of y'all have something to chime in? Alex, I see you unmuting yourself there. I was just actually about to tee up Michelle here because I know that she's been in that industry. Give us some insight. Give us some trade secrets. Don't actually do that. That's illegal. (laughs) Uh, Just tell us kind of what the the day-to-day like is at Chick-fil-A for them to to be that way. And also, what's in the Chick-fil-A sauce? Well, I wish I knew that part. That honestly is even a secret to everyday uh, Chick-fil-A workers like myself. But yeah, that stuff actually got shipped in, but we'll leave it at that just trade secrets on that one. Yeah. Um, but as far as Chick-fil-A, just completely killing the people business industry, um, creating a great customer experience every single time, it really does boil down to constant communication from every single person in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, I mean, I literally would leave at the end of the day, just almost like, I don't want to say emotionally tired, but my sensory would be overloaded. Mm-hmm. Like I would leave just so tired from hearing this, hearing that, um, talking back and forth with people, but from everyone in the um, like back of the house, they are t- constantly talking to the front mm-hmm. of the house how much time it's going to take for the fries to get out, how much time mm-hmm. it's going to take for the next set of chicken nuggets. And um, even from the driveway, they're like they're calling back orders than if somebody has like chicken tenders, for instance, um, takes longer to make than the nuggets. Mm-hmm. So little things like that, as soon as somebody's ordering it, somebody's on the headset before the order is even getting placed, letting the kitchen know. So they can already start that mm-hmm. before your order's even placed. And that is the epitome of like communication mm-hmm. and helping mm-hmm. your team out. And I'd say that is the reason they succeed so well is because the behind the scenes part is communicating and like creating that good customer service even before customers are even seeing it. I love that. Me too. I, and that right there showcases uh, just a, uh, a fundamental truth in business and a lot of entrepreneurs, I think and business owners overlook it, the sheer amount of just effort that it takes to communicate at that level. It takes it. Like you said, it, you go, you need to go home exhausted. If you're not leaving the office just exhausted, then, you know, did you leave something on the table? And like, that's something that Chick-fil-A, like it just takes an, an effort to make an effort. You know, that's why it's called making an effort and keeping the customer happy because it takes effort. Um, so yeah, that's like really, really good is if you want to deliver a high level service for a client or a customer, just depending on what business you're in and what you call them, um, it's it's all about that internal, you know, streamlined communication, working together, but then ec- communicating that externally too. Because there's been times like if it's going to take a few extra minutes for my order, which rarely happens at Chick-fil-A, but if it does, it's like made known to me before I even pull up to the window, you know? Um So yeah, I mean, that's just really, uh, again, communication is key. And I think every single relationship, whether it be a personal relationship or a business relationship, it's absolutely critical. So uh, shifting topics a little bit away from this, I want to know some brands that we talked about brands that y'all like for customer service, but one kind of segment that we do, if you can call it a segment, if you can call anything that we do here structured (laughs) <laughs> then it would be, I always ask Alex, what's a brand that he's jamming on? So I'm going to start with you, Alex, on that. What's a brand that you're jamming on? I don't know. Uh, okay. I leaned into the mic with a full answer, and I don't actually have an, an answer. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, of of brands out there right now that are actually kind of vibing. Um, I did a brand love earlier tonight <coughs> with uh, USPS, um, and somebody who's got mediocre customer service, but excellent 
you know, actual like physical branding is is kind of an interesting topic just mm-hmm. because they're not killing it necessarily in the in the game of um, what they do, which is delivering packages, but they are killing it in I th- in my opinion on the um, on the look front. Mm-hmm. They look pretty. Now are they good? They don't have the they have the form yeah. but not the function. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure. Okay. The fair enough. Michelle, what's the brand that you like right now? Um, one that I can think of, and this one is actually new to Lubbock, so if you haven't tried them yet, go ahead. Uh, show up in the drive thru, you won't be disappointed. Um, Dutch Bros recently made its way um, this way, never eat soggy waffles, east. Um, I do believe this is one of the most eastern Dutch Bros in the United States. There's one a little further east of us, but um, so they are slowly making their way around the country. Um, and mainly my spiel with them, why I'm really digging them, is they have similar customer service to Chick-fil-A, none other. Mm -hmm. Um, They do the same similar situation where now they've got an app where you can earn your points, you can order off the menu um, as you're there, and then their customers, or their, sorry, not their customers, their employees are very similar where they're asking about your day as they're taking Mm -hmm. your order. It's a very um, relationship-based interaction with them. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you're headed up to the window, you can hear them jamming. Like, it's a radio concert in their station like oh, they're nice. having fun so if you ever go there um that's one thing that i notice is they're having fun which makes me internally like nice. i have fun when i leave there even if i'm just there for a few minutes awesome oh, are we gonna have to fact check your directions there east west they, i checked never okay. soggy waffles i was like <laughs> oh, okay i got you i i heard you say that i was like i've never heard. what did you, what is that Never Robert eat soggy, soggy waffles. waffles there's a few different ones sour watermelon yeah sour them. watermelon there's a few it really? depends on where you're from, I think, is what your acronym nice. is. I've never heard of that. That's a whole topic for a whole other time, though. But nice. Okay. Well, coming back around full circle, back to the people business, because I have to pay homage to the last couple of episodes. I have to give an example of what poor customer service and marketing can do for your business or lack thereof. Dell whom I've ranted on, and I've now gotten that out of my system. So I will just say plainly, Dell computers, we've been using them for a long time. I have historically liked their stuff. We've had all Dell equipment, Dell monitors, Dell laptops, workstations, keyboards, mice, the whole thing. I even went out of my way to buy our conference room setup, which is actually Logitech equipment, but I bought it from Dell.com. Because of their poor customer experience, they're frankly ripping people off with their prices because I actually ended up returning all that conference room equipment to, to them because I found it online separately, individual pieces, but the exact same equipment, and I was able to get it $1,000 cheaper. Typically, when you buy a bundle, you're supposed to save, not when you buy each individual piece or, you know, individually are you supposed to save. But through a combination... But it's the convenience of having the bundle. <laughs> oh, gosh. The argument, I bet. Oh, I bet. But yeah, all of that to say... With all their, I've had all their equipment and all that stuff. We've returned all of the stuff that was within the return window and everything else that we had for a long time. We're planning on selling. We're converting over to Mac. I mean, I freaking left Windows because of Dell. Like, I, it's not that I hated Windows, I didn't, but I left them because of Dell and the pain caused there. Uh, so we're now a Mac household, everybody. Uh, but that's that right there is a testament to what poor, long term, just continuous lack of customer service can do for business. It's not like we didn't reach out and try to get help. We bought the extra premium support and never got any support. So if you're listening to this and you're like tangibly like, yeah, I don't, it's okay if I don't really focus on customer experience. No, you must focus on customer experience. Every successful business that's still around today, that's been around for a while, has a good customer experience thing. And it's just like a good customer experience uh, system. And the Dutch Brothers thing, I'm going to back you up on that. I haven't been there yet, but my wife has gone there a few times. She really likes it. Obviously, there's still lines that are like super big through the drive through So they're doing something right there. So yeah, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I'm not going to go try that place. But if you're into coffee, go try out Dutch Brothers. Uh, I've heard it's pretty good. And I, you know, they're good customer ex- experience, good customer service business. So check them out. Other than that, Michelle, this is your first podcast with us. How was it? 
Um, so far, so good. Y'all uh, hit me at the beginning, but yeah. I think I'm <laughs> at the end. Uh, Michelle, you hit yourself at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> we just sim- we, we were just simply there to witness that happen. Next time, I'll just stay quiet and just say yes. <laughs> just, yes. No, next time, it's you got to come and flame us. It's an internal Wonder Tree podcast tradition to... Uh, to haze the rookie. <laughs> right. So yeah. whoever's next. Jonathan's not necessarily a rookie, but he's getting hazed next. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're the first. You just happen to be the first one on well, the show. As long so. as y'all hit him harder than you guys hit me, I'll be okay. Yeah, for sure. We'll give him something. All right. I hear you cueing the music, so turn it up. Crank it out. Give me my outro. There it is. Thanks again for listening to this episode. Remember, you're in the people business. Focus on that customer experience, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.